Lesson 16, Accessibility, Creating a Tagged PDF. Accessibility is the process of creating content with a specific focus on making it usable for as many people as possible. There are many forms of accessibility. It is a vast subject that is ever growing. Accessibility is usually focused on preparing content for disabled users or users with limitations like people with color blindness, visual impairments, physical limitations, or auditory issues. The goal of accessibility is to be able to communicate the content of what is being presented to all audiences. To do this, we must prepare artwork in alternate formats so that the communication can occur even if it is in a different way than originally intended. For example, someone who is blind cannot see embedded images in a layout. Instead, they will use a screen reader to read the text and listen to a description of the image. As a designer, we can add alt text to an image so that when the screen reader passes by the image, the alt text is read to the audience. Accessibility is an important consideration when creating a design. Everything we do as graphic artists is focused on communicating a message to an audience. Communicating that message to our audience is the ultimate goal of a design. Dedicating time to creating accessible documents means as many people as possible will be able to experience your design and hear your message. Accessibility is a commonly overlooked feature in a design. It is easy to overlook the need to create these alternate formats within your design because you literally can't see them. If you forget to add accessibility, you won't know it is missing until a user tells you their screen reader can't read your page. In this lesson, we will focus on some basic steps for creating a tagged PDF for accessibility. But please know this is just the tip of the iceberg. Accessibility is a vast subject. There is always going to be more that you can do to improve the accessibility of your designs. Different industries and different output applications apply accessibility in varying ways. There's no way we can cover all aspects of accessibility in one module, but we will do our best to cover some essentials through the creation of a tagged PDF, and then, as you enter the workforce, you can learn more techniques for increasing accessibility in your chosen profession. Let's get started creating a tagged PDF. A PDF is a portable document format. It is a standard file format that is very versatile. It can be opened and edited by many different software applications. Anyone with a computer can receive and view a PDF. It is a great file format to use if you need to prepare a document that will be shared with others. A tagged PDF is a regular PDF that has been formatted for accessibility. It includes hidden accessibility content that is used by screen readers to read the text, images, and formatting in a document to someone who cannot see it. The following slides outline the basic steps needed to create a tagged PDF in Adobe InDesign. You can follow along with this sample lesson from Art1200 InDesign software by downloading the supplied files. They are posted directly below this video in Canvas. Please note, these are the basic steps. They are the absolute minimum that you should be doing to create a tagged PDF. Depending on what is in your design, there may be more formatting needs than those included in the demo. Step one, design your project as a static design. As you are designing your layout, use paragraph styles on all text and use header rows on all tables. Step two, sync your paragraph styles to export tags. Text is tagged in a ranked order using heading levels one through six and a paragraph tag. If all of your text is linked to saved paragraph styles, you can very quickly sync each to a specific export tag. Make sure nothing is selected and then double click on one of your saved paragraph styles. Then click export tagging in the bottom left corner of the paragraph style options dialog. There are two options for setting an export tag here. You can set a tag for EPUB and HTML documents or for PDF documents. We're making a tagged PDF, so we need to update the PDF settings. But it can't hurt to set both while you are here, just in case you end up exporting your project to an EPUB or an HTML file in the future. 
Select OK to save your changes and then repeat for every single paragraph style in your project, ranking your headings from 1 to 6. Step 3. Next, we will add alt text to our images. Select an image in your document and then choose Object, Object Export Options to launch the Object Export Options dialog. Use the first tab that says Alt Text. Change the Alt Text Source drop down menu to Custom and then type your alt text into the text area below. Select Done when you are finished. Repeat for all images and visual elements within your project. Step 4. Use the File menu to launch the File Info dialog. Choose File and then File Info. Minimally add a document title, author, and copyright status within the basic section of this dialog. This dialog adds metadata to your project. Add as much information within this dialog as you wish or need for your project. Step 5. Now you can export your project as a PDF. Choose File, Export, and choose to export as a print PDF. Find the Create Tagged PDF option within the Export Adobe PDF dialog. Make sure it is checked. Adjust any other settings required for your project, and then select Export to finalize your tagged PDF. The steps we just completed are the absolute minimum needed to set up a tagged PDF with accessibility. However, accessibility is a vast concept that has many facets. There is always more and more that can be done to improve accessibility. In addition to adding metadata, alt tags on images, using table headers, and tagging text with paragraph styles, you can use the articles panel to define the order content is read by a screen reader, you can anchor images in text flows so that the alt tag is read at the appropriate time within a design, and you can use Adobe Color to test color contrast issues before exporting. InDesign users should also use bookmarks, an automated table of contents, hyperlinks, and cross-references. Let's start by looking at a layout that uses many individual text frames and graphics. The frames bounce all over the place. Do you feel the visual design naturally allows a user to read the content in the order it was intended? The answer should be yes, since that's our goal as graphic designers. We can use the articles panel to ensure someone using a screen reader gets the same experience. We can define what text frame is read first, and then second, and third, and fourth, and so on. Open the articles panel via the window menu. Choose Window and then Articles. Since we are making tagged PDFs, the first thing we need to do is communicate with InDesign that we would like to use the Articles panel to determine the order of objects in a tagged PDF. This is activated via the Options Flyout menu. Choose Use for Tagging Order in Tagged PDF. Now we can set the tagged order. Click an object on your workspace and then select the Create New Article option at the bottom of the Articles panel. Alternatively, you can also drag that object onto the Articles panel directly, or you can select New Article via the Options Flyout menu. Give your new article a name and make sure Include when exporting is checked. The name you choose is strictly for your benefit when organizing content in InDesign. It will not show up on a screen reader. It will, however, display when viewing articles in Adobe Acrobat. Repeat this process by clicking each text frame and or graphic in the order you wish it to be read by a screen reader. Instead of creating a new article, choose the option to add selection to articles. Make sure your new selections are all nested under the same original article. When it is appropriate, you can create multiple articles. This will allow screen readers to skip ahead to the next section in a document. So. If there are multiple frames and graphics that are all part of the same content block, they should be saved as one article. If you have pages or text bodies that are intended to be viewed as separate chunks of content, you can separate them using multiple articles. 
Anchoring images within text flows allows the image to be read as close to the body of text it pertains to as possible. In InDesign, this is called object anchoring, and it can be as simple a process as dragging and dropping. A huge benefit of object anchoring is that it does not have to affect the visual aesthetics of a print or digitally viewed layout. Design the entire layout as you would like it to be experienced visually, and then go back and anchor your objects. There is a blue square in the top right corner of every frame. Text frames, graphic frames, and unassigned frames all have it. It is used to anchor objects. Hover over one of these blue squares and a tooltip will appear with instructions for anchoring. The basic steps to anchor an object to a specific location within a text frame are, first, select the object you wish to anchor with the selection tool so that you can see the blue square. This is usually a graphic frame, but it can also be a text frame or an unassigned frame. Next, click and drag the blue square. Don't let go of your mouse. Drag until you are hovering over the text frame you wish to anchor your text to. As you hover over the text frame, you will see a text cursor appear. Continue moving your mouse over the frame until the text cursor is exactly where you would like to anchor your graphic. It is a good idea to make this at the end of a sentence or a paragraph. Anchoring in the middle of a sentence can be confusing for someone using a screen reader. When you're ready, release your mouse and the object or graphic will anchor onto the text. You will be able to see it visually because there will be a little ship anchor icon on the graphic frame and a long dashed line connecting the object to the area it is linked to in the frame. Another great way to increase accessibility is to make sure the color used in your layout has good contrast so that viewers with visual impairments are given the best opportunity to be able to see and read the text. Adobe has a feature that will allow you to test different color combinations for both visual aesthetic purposes and for accessibility functionality. It is called Adobe Color and you can begin to explore with it by visiting color.adobe.com. Use the Create or Explore or Trends tabs at the top of the page to experiment with color. After you've selected a color combination you would like to use, you can test its accessibility by clicking on the Accessibility Tools option within the Create tab. Here, you'll be able to input your text and background colors. You'll have to enter the colors as hexadecimal codes or RGB values, so make sure you write down the hex codes and or the RGB values. You can also skip the exploration stage altogether and plug and chug color combinations directly within the Accessibility Tools page. Adobe will scan the color combinations to provide an accessibility report for both contrast and color blindness. You can toggle between them on the left side of the page. Contrast is presented as a ratio score. Different organizations may have different ratios they find acceptable. You can change what is considered passing by setting a specific contrast ratio. A fun feature of Adobe Color's accessibility tools is that it will provide suggestions for improving the accessibility. The example on screen shows the text and background color combination fails at 17 points or smaller, but Adobe is letting us know if we use bold text and 18 point or larger text, it will pass. It also provides slightly different options or recommendations that are even better than what was, we had chosen. Color blindness is a little more straightforward. If you switch the tools drop down from the contrast checker to colorblind safe, the colors will either be identified as colorblind safe or not colorblind safe. If they are not safe, you can follow the instructions on screen to choose different colors until the warning goes away. InDesign users should also use bookmarks, an automated table of contents, hyperlinks, and cross-references when applicable. These all improve a screen reader's ability to successfully read the layout the way it is intended to be experienced. We've already learned about all of these during previous lessons of this course, so we won't relearn them again now. 
Just know that it is good practice to use the bookmarks tab to set bookmarks, to always automate your table of contents, so don't make it one manually, activate hyperlinks via the hyperlinks panel, and to use cross-references when applicable within your designs. Adobe recommends finalizing and testing your PDF in Adobe Acrobat. You can download Acrobat through Adobe Creative Cloud, and on a side note, I recommend setting Adobe Acrobat as your default PDF viewer. Acrobat is the best program for working with PDFs. Acrobat has a few extra features that can be added to or used with an accessible PDF. Before we run an accessibility test, we should assign a document language and set a tabbed order if applicable. The document language is set via the file menu. Choose File and then Properties. Navigate to the Advanced tab and then change the language under Reading Options if it is not already set to the correct language for your particular needs. The tab order is the order objects and text like form fields and hyperlinks will be selected in your PDF when the tab key is pressed. The page thumbnails pane is used to adjust the tab order. Open it via the view menu. Choose view, show hide, navigation panes, and then page thumbnails. Then, highlight the thumbnail for every single page in your PDF. Next, use the Options Flyout menu in the top left corner of the Page Thumbnails pane to select the Page Properties. The Page Properties dialog will appear. Within the Tab Order section of the dialog, change the content order from Unspecified to Use Document Structure. This will sync the tab order to the articles order you set in InDesign. Note, these steps are for print PDFs. If you are making an interactive PDF, the option to use document structure is inside the export dialog in InDesign. It is finally time to test your tagged PDF. Exporting to a tagged PDF is only half the battle. Now you need to test your accessibility to make sure it works as intended. Adobe recommends using Acrobat. At the very top of the Acrobat workspace, you should be able to switch to the Tools tab. This shows a wide variety of additional tools available for use in Acrobat. Find the Accessibility option and choose Open. As soon as you choose Open, you will be redirected back to your PDF, but now the pane on the right side of the workspace will be set for accessibility. Alternatively, you can also use the View menu You'll choose Tools and then Accessibility. And, just like everything else we've done with accessibility, there are quite a few options that may or may not apply to all circumstances. For now, I'd like you to run a full accessibility test and generate a report. To do this, you will need to choose Accessibility Check and then inside the Accessibility Checker Options dialog, you will select the options to create an accessibility report and then select all of the check options. Take a minute to set the location that the report will be saved to and then press start checking to get started. This usually happens really quickly. Find the report document that was generated, wherever you told it to save, and then open the file. You're looking for an HTML file that is the exact name of your PDF with .html at the end. It will open in a web browser. Your goal is for every status to say passed. Review any statuses that have failed to determine if there's anything you can do to improve the accessibility score. Preparing accessible documents is all about the intended output and the intended audience. We're all using Canvas for this course, so let's use Canvas as an applicable example. As an instructor, it is my job to try to make courses as accessible as possible. Once I prepare a PDF with accessibility for use in a Canvas course, I need to double and triple check that it works in Canvas inside the course. I've checked it in InDesign and I've checked it in Acrobat, 
but I should also check it in my end goal, which in this case is Canvas. As we learned when creating digital designs earlier in this course, not all digital outputs are cross compatible. You can do everything right to prepare a digital document with interactivity, or in our case, a tagged PDF with accessibility, and then find out that some aspect of the document setup is not compatible with the final destination. There's also the adage that you don't know what you don't know. Maybe Canvas is going to check for something that wasn't on my radar in InDesign or in Acrobat. Remember, accessibility is a huge process. We're just focusing on our little tiny piece of the world right now. Maybe Canvas knows something that we don't know. The easiest way for instructors to check accessibility in Canvas is to upload a document into the files of the course. I have found that you get better results checking the accessibility if you use the document on a specific page. Checking it right from the files often takes a while to update and has at times resulted in false positives or false negatives. So when I test accessibility in my course, I upload a document to the files and then go to the page I will be using the document on. Once there, I add the document to the page as a clickable hyperlink that students will use to download the file. After the page is saved and refreshed, Canvas automatically runs an accessibility test using a plugin called Ally that checks for specific accessibility standards including headings, structure, alt text, table headers, tag PDFs, color contrast, video captions, and more. It scans all documents uploaded to the course and then gives each a percentage score that is linked to a color-coded tag. Files are rated red, orange, light green, and dark green, dark green being the best, but light green or higher is acceptable. My goal as an instructor is to earn 100% on all accessibility tests. In this particular application, Canvas will not only tell me how good I am doing, but if I click on the little color-coded thumbnail, it will tell me what the exact percentage score is, why it was earned, and what needs to be fixed to improve the score. When working on ARC 1200 InDesign software, I learned the blue text used in my subheads was not passing accessibility in Canvas. So I had to go back and change the blue text from 50% blue to 100% blue, re-export the PDF, and run the test again until it finally passed with a 100% accessibility score in Canvas. Most of you won't be preparing accessible documents for use in Canvas, but the concept is still applicable. You always need to think of the final destination of your design. Test your accessibility as you go. Test it in InDesign and in Acrobat and in whatever manner your final design will be experienced.